Hello everyone, we are here at the Missouri Botanical Garden to give you a virtual tour. I'm Christina and this is Cassidy. This morning we are here in the Bulb Garden, which is in full bloom right now and there is a really, really wide variety of flowers. So there's a lot to show you. We're going to start off here and walk around some more of the garden to show you what else we can find. So behind us here is this crab apple tree in full bloom. And last week we began our tour um, in front of the pink crab apple trees, the variety name being Cardinal. But this is a white variety of crab apple here in the bulb garden. And you can kind of see, especially when the wind blows, you can uh, you can kind of see some of the petals starting to fall off of it in the wind, um, which is happening to a lot of the crab apples around the garden. This is probably the the last week. I don't know if we can kind of see it over here in the in the blue sky. Uh, as the wind blows, um, and you can you can sort of see in the in the grass, there's there's petals everywhere and and magnolia uh, blossoms everywhere. Um, so just one set of the collection getting done with its flowering um, and moving on to the next. So uh, daffodils are another that are going to be on their way out. Um, But lots of other things coming in in their place. There's still lots of tulips here. And here, and there's, I love this area with so many different colors of tulips and those bluebells behind them as well. Just so much color. Yeah, and speaking of tulips, the bulb garden, and I think we've showed this off before, but uh, this bed here in front of us uh, is filled with all different types of tulips, um, species tulips or um, interesting cultivars that aren't what you may typically think of when you think of a tulip. Uh, so let's kind of take a look through here. You saw the ones we just um, just looked at being those big showy um, tulips that we have in a lot of our display areas uh, out in front of the Climatron, that sort of thing. But in here you get all these uh, little varieties. Um, here's a flax, flax leaf tulip. This tiny little thing. Um, and over here are some more of this little You've got, here's a lady tulip and a fritillary right next to each other. So fritillaries uh, are another thing that's coming into bloom uh, this week. But you can just see all the different colors, shapes, and sizes of tulips, uh, specifically in, in this bed here in the bulb garden. And when we say a species tulip, <clears throat> That means something that occurs that way in the wild that hasn't been cultivated. Mm. So a lot of these larger tulips that you're used to seeing, those have been hybridized to be that way, to be more showy. And this one here is just so teeny tiny. Um, this is a, a tulip from Iran. And just compared to the some of the tulips that you think of that have those flowers that are the size of your fist. I mean, this is barely the size of A my thumb. pinky finger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and even here, uh, those are that's another type of fritillary. Um, that's one that you don't normally see. And that's kind of the idea behind this bed, which was uh, only recently redesigned in the last few years and replanted, uh, is showing off a lot of these species tulips, um, species bulbs um, from the parts of the, the world where they're native. So more lady tulips, 
Um, here's another neat little tulip here from Iran, uh, right next to your arm, Christina, is another fritillary here that um, you can kind of see inside there. It's just really neat. And just really lots of, lots of uh, big patches of color, sort of real low to the ground here as uh, we look across this bed. We also have in this bed here um, a species of iris that's native to uh, Central Asia and Afghanistan. This sort of bright and pale yellow colors playing off of each other. Uh, the common name for this one is a Juno iris. And so um, these are some of the earlier blooming types of irises, the, uh, the ones that you um, typically think of the bearded irises that we have in our iris garden, those are still about a month away. Uh, those tend to peak around Mother's Day. Uh, but here in the bulb garden and in some other parts of the garden, these, these smaller species irises are, are definitely starting to come into bloom. Um, more of these fun fritillaries here. This guy's pretty big. Yeah. You can see more yellow behind these irises, and that's a really teeny type of daffodil. Yeah, and just so many. Christina, I don't know if you can, can walk up kind of close on those tulips there, but that's... um. Just a, a really neat type of, of tulip, a, kind of called a flame tip tulip or a flame tulip. And you can see why, because it looks, it looks like the fl uh, flame on the end of that uh, stem there. And this one is native to Turkey. just so much variety in this in this one bed here um, is really worth stopping and, and taking some time to look at if you come and visit um, we are closed on Mondays but open Tuesday through Sunday and we can tell you that uh, now that the weather has warmed up and things have started to bloom uh, those tickets are limited because our capacity is limited so I would definitely encourage you to uh, go online and reserve a ticket for the day that you'd like to visit uh, as far in advance as, um, as you can so that uh, you can come and see this on the day that you prefer. And you can just do that at, at mobot.org slash visit. And there's quite a bit of bleeding, bleeding heart over here in this shadier area of the bulb garden. You can see all the way over here, that hint of pink, that's bleeding heart as well. But let's get up close right here in front of us on this. This is just um, a really delicate, amazing flower with this interesting shape. You can see why it's called bleeding heart. And one of the other things that people say is that if you take the flower, it kind of looks like a lady in a bathtub. And that's another common name for this flower as well, is lady in a bath. So you can see where that comes from as well. Yeah, but that's kind of pulling, the, pulling it apart from its original 
form like that and the little arms and everything. Uh, please don't do that with our flowers here, but if you have some in your own yard, give it a try. But there's quite a field of these bleeding hearts here. Um, not only this variety that has all the pink to it, but there's um, there's a, a white variety up here. Just lots of different things in bloom. I think this is spring snowflake or maybe summer snowflake. You can see those little green dots are very distinctive. That's uh, definitely an identifier for this one. Yeah, and up here on, on this path, it's just got lots of color from many different uh, sources, bluebells and bleeding hearts and the summer snow or the spring snowflake. And it's nice and green too. And Christina, that's something I think in the last week has really kicked in is the the color green. Yeah. You know, we've been waiting, there's been there have been things in bloom now for um at least a month and some really showy things, but it wasn't until the last week or so that um, all that foliage has really come out and started to change, uh, change just the whole view of the garden. There's really that much more green to it. And that was really just one half of the bulb garden. Um, you can kind of see in front of us, the other half is equally is in bloom, but we're gonna turn now and kind of uh, show you something else that's a big change at the, the garden uh, starting this weekend uh, as we turn and leave the bulb garden and head towards the central axis here. You may notice uh, something new in front of the Climatron. And that's one of the massive sculptures that's being installed this week as part of origami in the garden. So the installation for that event is happening this week and it will open this weekend. And you can see uh, this sculpture is a tower of cranes all in a circle here. 24 feet tall. Now I'll get up close and pause here so you can see those cranes in the structure. So we're really excited to be starting to install these pieces this week and we'll all be ready to welcome you to view all of them starting this weekend. Yeah, and you can kind of see in the distance there, the staff is getting the lily pools ready. So hopefully in the next few weeks, um, the, the big uh, Amazon water lilies will be going out in the central pool and then the uh, the more tropical water lilies are typically sometime in May towards the beginning of June. So getting ready for that display as well. 
And just coming from the bulb garden where we were talking about that bed where most of the tulips are species tulips, I did want to point out um, that these are the type of tulip that most people are more familiar with. And they are also beautiful. And there are quite a few of them still here along the central axis. Along with these African daisies, and these are really really nice. They have this almost ombre bursting out from their center. So a lot of color here on the central axis as well. Yeah, and even some things up here in the, the rock garden, which um, is open here on the north side of the Climatron. Um, it's right along uh, the construction fence here where we're um, doing work for the new Jack C. Taylor Visitor Center. But this part of the garden is still open. Um, there's some more of those early irises that are coming into bloom um, that are really pretty in this. Um, well, I can't remember what the, I want to say this is called candy tuft maybe. That's, the, that looks like candy tuft the, to me. The white fluffy um, little shrub here. There's also some species tulips um, as well. Um, here and as we go up the path, there's a there's a, a bunch of other things in bloom. So this is the pat uh, pask flower. And then over here is a uh, uh, this is a member of the mustard family. It's uh, in bloom right now. And the really showy thing out here just grabs your attention in the landscape is this basket of gold. Um, I mean, this thing is just in full bloom right now and kind of puts an exclamation point uh, on this section of the rock garden here. And this is actually a good reminder. Um, the rock garden uh, is really nice to look at. And also in the, the back of the, the south end of the garden um, is an alpine garden that's sort of similarly designed. Uh, and it's gonna be coming into bloom as well. It's a real hidden gem that you kind of have to go uh, back past uh, Tower Grove House back past the stumpery and but if you can find it it's going to have a lot of these same little low to the ground uh, but very pretty flowers that are coming into bloom right now and just as we come back past the origami in the garden sculpture that was installed just this morning um, just to mention that that does the exhibit does open this weekend and it is included with regular garden admission. So you can come and see that uh, throughout the summer. And we will be offering some evening hours at some point as well. Uh, so check our website and follow us on social media to get all those details. Just so something while we're here. We're talking about things leafing out. Those are little baby pin oak leaves that are just starting to come out. And it's always interesting to me, the color of the leaves right now is this really lime green color that will sort of give way to a darker green as the season wears on. Um, but it's always neat to see these little baby leaves and uh, as I'm not seeing it on this oak tree but a lot of oak trees are, are in flower right now and they're wind pollinated they have uh, catkins 
uh, that blow around in the wind and that's how they release their pollen and, and pollinate and uh, so if you're having issues with allergies that's one of the big culprits this time of year is is tree pollen and actually you know we couldn't see it on that branch but as I'm looking more fully at the tree itself I can see yes you can uh, see it here on the end you can see they're loaded with this is a tree loaded with flowers even if it doesn't quite look it uh, from a distance and it's probably one of the reasons that you're sneezing <laughs> I know I have been probably noticed on the on the camera in front of us here uh, the pinks and whites the really bright colors here uh, from the red buds so both the white that you see on the left and the pink that you see on the right are the same type of tree they're both red buds um, with the one on the left being uh, a white form so it's typically called a white bud or a white red bud um, and then the the one that most of you are probably used to seeing and probably seeing all over the neighborhood right now in parks uh, in state parks uh, is the native red bud this really I think this past weekend and this week are are really a peak time for those native understory trees uh, redbud, dogwood are really in, in full bloom right now. We talked about this last week, but um, on redbuds, they sometimes will flower straight out of the larger branches or trunk as opposed to only coming out of the twiggier branches at the end. And this is a feature called cauliflory. It's very interesting. It's a really a cool feature. You can see these little puffs going all the way up. And of course it does flower as you can see on those smaller branches as well. Yeah, and red buds are in the bean family. So you can see these are some fruits left over from the previous year. Uh, look a lot like peas. Uh, that you might grow in the garden and if you look close enough at the flowers on a red bud um, and the the flowers that grow on say if you grow like snap peas or something in your in your home garden you'll notice some similar characteristics to the way the flower looks and it's because they're part of the same botanical family I've heard you can eat the flowers on red buds. I've never tried it myself. I haven't either. And then here on the other side of the path is just another, um, this is the white form. Um, and what's really interesting about, uh, what's really interesting about these is that, um, White red buds are kind of an anomaly that uh, occur naturally, but don't don't necessarily carry those characteristics to their offspring. Uh, so the garden, uh, the Missouri Botanical Garden, almost about a hundred years ago, was uh, presented with some white red buds that someone found in the woods in Missouri and um, in southern Missouri and they couldn't get the white red bud to reproduce offspring with white flowers and they figured out that to carry that flower characteristic that color characteristic through they actually needed to graft 
the white red bud onto rootstock of the native red bud with the typical pink flowers. So you can actually see that in action down here at the base of this tree. So here's the white um, the the white flowers or buds for the white red bud and then grafted on to roots that still have those pink buds sticking out. So most of the if not all of the white red buds that you would find for purchase are going to be grafted on to red bud rootstock uh, because they can't the offspring of a white red bud doesn't necessarily produce white flowers they'll probably all be pink so kind of a neat way the Missouri Botanical Garden played into the history of this tree um, and this is just a really pretty place to be there's uh, five of the white red buds here um, with that backdrop of the other red buds along the fence of the children's garden and this is really a peak time for them you can tell because of how popular they are with pollinators that <laughs> they're in top form So thank you all for joining us on this tour today. We look forward to seeing you again next week. And please do reserve your tickets ahead of time to come see this garden. It's so beautiful right now. And we're really looking forward to opening Origami in the Garden this weekend as well. So thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.